Hey you guys, Desmond here. And Lucretia. And welcome back to the channel. Woo! And today we are here to discuss RuPaul's Drag Race UK season five, episode two, and three. And a brief yeah. recap on episode one because of our technical difficulties. Difficulty. But before we get into it, I want to remind everyone to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We are so close to our goal of 500 subscribers. 30. 30. And we want to reach it by the end of the year. And I know it's possible. So go ahead and you're, if you're not subscribed, yes, go ahead and hit that little button. It only takes two seconds, okay? And we'll love you forevermore, okay? Okay. <laughs> um, but what did we think of these two episodes all together? Um, there were three really great episodes. Yes, I'm telling you now, season five or series five, as they like to, if they everybody say season, but technically a series. Um, yeah, because in the UK they just have to be different. Um. <laughs> I think this season is turning out to be an amazing season. Even though they yeah. had to edit out She Who Shall Not Be Named. I will say with episode... Because I showed them, I know her name. I know it, but I'm not going to say it. Um, because episode two, you saw very little of her. Like, they did a better job at hiding her in episode two. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, after episode two was when you know, production found out about her issues and she was disqualified and sent home to the house. So episode three was the first episode. If you notice, that was the first one where we got the full shot on the main stage. Ooh. I'm like, oh, it's so nice to see everybody in one shot. Hi. <laughs> As a screenshotter here, I appreciate having the being able to see everyone. Because for episode <laughs> two we couldn't. Or one. <laughs> Or one. Or yeah. one. Now, we're going to briefly go over episode one because, you know, we can't ignore the fact that, you know, the video was taken down because of technical difficulties on my part. So, yeah. So, we're just going to yes. briefly go over what happened. They did a ball yes. where they had to serve three different looks. The first look was actually their entrance look. So, for the first time yes. ever... They're being judged on what they're walking into the run uh, the workroom in. Um, mm -hmm. I thought this was a fun little twist there. For the yes. second category, they had to perform in front of Drag Race Legends. Yes, you know, and we were living. Living. Uh, Jimbo, Silky Nutmeg Ganache, Minty Drop, Nikki Doll, Blue Hydrangea. Pangina. Pangina Hills, and Lady Camden. We're all Lady there. Gondon. All there. Um, they ate the stage up. In particular, Carmel ate the stage up. <laughs> um, DD had a wig slip. And then, of course, for the final look, it was Fierce Impressions, which was on the main stage. Um, mm -hmm. And we found out that there was nobody going home, that we had mm -hmm. a top five, and the top two will be lip syncing for the win. We found yeah. out that the top two was Caramel and Vicky Vivacious. Um, mm -hmm. I remember saying last week that I think I probably would have had Michael up here in the top instead of Vicky. But Vicky did mm -hmm. a good job too. So like I wasn't completely upset, but I would have been like, oh, I would have just made a different decision. Right. So they lip sync and Vicky is the winner of that lip sync. So she gets the first repeater badge. And now yes. we are caught up. <laughs> so after Almost. the... Almost. Now we got to talk about episode two. <laughs> oh. And this is my fault that we didn't do episode two because I was at ACL. <laughs> yeah, she was having a good time watching many people perform. And plus, you know, it was nice to have a break. You know, we've been going yes. so strong every week. It was nice just to have one week, technically two, because the first episode, although we did it, it just, it wasn't we able it. to. We worked it, it just <laughs> didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, so for them it's been two weeks, for us it's only been a week. But it was a much needed week. Like, I was able to get a lot of stuff done. 
I even took an extra day off, and I'm thinking about doing it again. Anyway. <laughs> I wish so, I could do that. So after the non-elimination, they come mm-hmm. in. They're sitting down. They congratulate Vicky Vivacious and Caramel for being the top two. But then they congratulate just Vicky for winning the lip sync. And Ginger, I love you, Ginger. I am a Ginger Johnson stan after this moment here. Because she called out Didi. She was like, what you did was messed up. You tried to get into mm. this baby's head and look at her. She was in the top. Huh. Mm. <laughs> and Didi tried to give some BS reasoning, but no ma'am. No ma'am. No ma'am. No ma'am. But then, um, I forget who said it, but somebody was like, oh, but we all said that Alexis did bad and she shouldn't have buttoned the bottom. Correct. You all said it, but who put out that thought first? Didi. Right. She came up and said, oh, I think you were the worst. And everybody else just kind of jumped on her. That's pretty much the way I looked at it. Everybody jumped on the bandwagon. Yeah, you know, like, oh, yeah, she yeah, she was the worst. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, yeah, Dee Dee did say it first. So, we are now in the workroom for the next day. And Vicky shows off her new badge. Um, and then Dee Dee apologizes to Alexis for how she approached her. She was basically saying, I was trying to get a plan in my head and it was easier having somebody across that stage it's from me so I know what I need to do. And like, I get it, but at the same time, you can't project your fears onto other people. Because not only did you project it onto Alexis, it actually worked. She started doubting herself because you started right. projecting on her. So you you got to remember your words have power, and you you yeah. you you did that to her. You did, but I'm glad mm-hmm. you apologized. So she already her Majesty done already done had hers assist, and we mm-hmm. get the room mail for this week. RuPaul enters the workroom, and we have our Brick Crew come out for a mini challenge. So basically, oh, Brit Crew, oh Brit Crew. So they're playing Let the Cat Out the Bag, which basically is Hot Potato. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, they're playing Hot Potato. (laughs) Okay, cool. So they just pass the bag until Kitty Girl stops playing and whoever it lands on have to open up and see what's in the bag. So it first lands on Kate Butch and she gets the hysterical bag. So she has to hand this to the queen she thinks is the funniest. And she gave it to Banksy, which I was shocked. I'm like, okay, maybe we're not seeing all of Banksy's jokes just yet. Right. Oh, but honey, we got to see the shady side of Banksy in episode three. We're going to get to that in a minute, honey. (laughs) And I was livid. Because, so, they go again. And this time it stops on Dee Dee Licious. And she got the feral bag. Which means she now has to pick one of her teammates or one of her co- whatever you want to call them. Uh, mm-hmm. co-stars who is most likely to start a fight and she gave that back to Caramel and I'm like again maybe we're not seeing something mm-hmm. maybe something had to be cut because of a person who was cut out mm-hmm. so maybe we're not seeing that but we see it you know later in this episode and I'm like oh there it is Ooh. there it yes. is even though I was team her 100% <laughs> um, and then Tomorrow ends up with the next bag and it oh no not tomorrow freaking Vicky Vivacious ends up with the next bag and it was Catholic and she was supposed to choose which of the queens has the best body she chose tomorrow and then Ginger Johnson ended up with the bag and she had the perfect bag inside of it and basically who is the queen that thinks she's perfect but she's not and she mm. gave it to Titi Licious. <laughs> and then Mama Rue had probably the best read I've ever heard on Drag Race UK. So you're saying mm. Dee Licious is Dee Delusional? I'm like, oh! Woo. Mama said, don't. She said, be- I ain't even need the writers for that one. <laughs> Baby. Baby, because reading is fundamental, honey. She had to let the children know. But she can I read can a still bitch. do it. I can still read you down, honey. Read you down. Okay, especially since the last six reading challenges have been lackluster. Okay. 
So, tomorrow gets the last one, and she is the winner. And she won a chew, a chew toy is what they called it. So, that's what we're going to call it here. <laughs> so yes, that YouTube doesn't toy. try to say anything. She said my favorite. It's a chew toy. I want a chew toy. And because she's the winner, she gets an advantage for the design challenge. So, she gets mm-hmm. to pick one item before anybody else. And she also gets to pick someone to join her in picking an item. It it made sense for her to pick Caramel. Their housemates. Mm-hmm. But she chose Dee Dee Licious. Saying mm. that because Dee Dee knows how to sew. And Caramel, being someone who can sew, took offense to that. And she right. Was, you know, she just now, kind of... My thing is, is like, what did she think that was going to do for her? What, did she think she was just going to make the garment for her? That's what my whole situation would have been. Yeah. So they go like, I understood why she took, like, uh, I'm not going to lie. I was, like, half asleep and trying to finish homework at the same time I was watching. But I was like, at first I was like, why is she upset? And then I thought about it and I was like, no, I can see why you would get upset. I wasn't. At first, like at this point, I would have been like, oh, no, there's no need to be upset just yet. What really upset me, and we're going to get to it here in a second. Um, Mm -hmm. But but Dee Dee and Tamara go and pick their items. And then all of the queens that they showed us ran over to the area to get their materials. Um, I want to give a special shout out to our special guest star this episode, the Pink Horse. (laughs) because <laughs> when Banksy and Ginger were over there talking to the pink horse I forgot the name they gave her I was just dying just dying over yes, there because that was sitting there spilling tea I'm like can we keep the pink horse in the workroom please yes I think the pink horse needs to be a new feature yeah so typically we don't talk about the walkthroughs that we have but the editor in chief of Vogue and RuPaul come in, and they you got to make the distinction. It's British Vogue because Anna Wintour is not there. I'm sorry, British Vogue. <laughs> let me let me clarify. Of British Vogue, they come in and they're talking about the queens about their designs. They get Caramel and Tamara Thomas over here, and mm-hmm. this is where the disrespect came in. Yes, definitely. This is where I was like, you better get her. Because she basically downplayed Carmel in front of RuPaul and I can't remember the British editor of Vogue. Um, but yeah. And she's Richard like, well, something. Yeah. And it just it just really irritated matter of fact, it might be in my notes. But it just really irritated me watching that because it's just like you're downplaying her and you're not just doing it in front of the queens you're doing it in front of RuPaul right and someone who oh, has one of the highest power of fashion in Britain like you're just sitting here and you're playing in my face and I don't like that mm, especially since we're roommates and then go sit there well, what have I seen of yours? Edward Innifel is his name. Ah. And th- that's the part. That The rest of it, I'm like, okay, well, what did you see? What did I see of yours that you sold? Oh, now you want me to Ooh. list? In, like, we're doing this in front of Rue. Mm. That was mad disrespectful. That's where I was like, oh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. And, baby, I loved it because... You got to remember, she is from the South. She is from Georgia. Exactly. She is American. She is from Georgia. When she said, and you can't get it through your thick skull, baby, that is a Southern insult right there. <laughs> as soon as she said it, I'm like, ooh. She mad that. Oh, honey. Oh, honey. Because I, w- I would have been upset, too. Like, you didn't pick me cool. Whatever. But don't downplay right. my ability to make yourself look better in front of RuPaul. Don't do that. Exactly. But let's get to the main stage. 
we have Mama Ru here. What did we think of RuPaul's look this week? Um, you know what? I think that's gorgeous. I thought it was stunning. I agree. Very stunning. Very stunning. We were joined by Michelle, Graham Norton, and our special guest judge, Yasmin Finney. So I didn't like Michelle's look too much. You didn't? No. I can see why. <laughs> I can see why. I can see why. Is, is she like the gray streaks are fine? It I looks, think, but the way this is angled, it looks completely gray. Exactly, and then it washes her out and blends into the suit. But the category Yasmin looks fire, though. Oh yeah, Yasmin looks amazing. Uh, the category for this week is Pet Shop Catwalk Couture. Up first, yes, you know, with the big boy. Up first is Kate Butch. Now, I love yeah, the I love silhouette of this, uh huh. But the actual material she used uh -huh. was a big no, was a big no. no. I like you, no. you made a nice garment, but the pattern you chose, and you know me, I typically like a mismatch, but it don't work here, <laughs> it don't work here. But the actual designing of it, she did a great job. Yeah, the silhouette is nice. The garment itself is nice. I just don't like what it was made out of. Yes. Yes. Up next is Banksy. Just amazing. Mm-hmm. Banksy, so let amazing. me show you something real quick. Let me show you. I need maybe she looks really good as a blonde. Oh my goodness. And then her just skinny little legs. Mm -hmm. I was like, ugh. I don't want to be that skinny. No. I don't want to be that skinny because Banksy's just a little bit shorter than me. Oh, um, I don't want to get that skinny. If I get close to that skinny, say something to me. Uh, uh, look, we are not in the 90s. We're not doing heroin chic, so. Say something yeah. to me. But she looks stunning here. I love, I just love the flowiness of the handkerchiefs on her arms and her bandanas. Mm -hmm. Like it was just, it all worked so well. It all worked so well for me. Up next is Caramel. I wish she would have had the time to finish this. Yes, me too. Because the top half is amazing. Yes. But I agree with the judges. You could tell she ran out of time and she's like, I got to do something. So I'm gonna throw this together. Yes. But the top, I love it. Uh huh. You can see the vision and where it was going. Yes. You can see where Just she was wish going. Just you knew the execution, and I love that wig. That wig is fire. Yeah, I just, I just wish she would have. I wish she would have realized sooner that she wasn't going to have enough time to maybe salvage this into something else. But it was very right. clear. Oh no, I'm running out of time. I got this. Let's let's just go. Right. I got this blue material. It matches. Let me just work with it. Yeah. Up next is Ginger Johnson. What did you think of this look here? Ooh, hold on. I'm not a big. The outfit is nice. The hair, on the other hand, I could have dealt with without. You know, I saw online people were really hating this hair, but I love it. And I agree, the garment that she actually made, it's a nice one. I was like, look at you. And you made that? Like, come on, Ginger. But you know, Ginger has stated she makes most of her drag. So, like, I'm not shocked when she walked out and it was beautiful. I'm like, okay. But yeah, I like the wig. I do. I do. Shoot me. Well, don't shoot me. <laughs> Up next, Let's not do that. Right? Up next is Alexis St. Pete. I wish she would have made a panty or put on a panty that she already had. Right. Because you can see all her good, her no no box. Baby, I thought that was Sierra, not my goodies. Um, I like this though. Yeah, it was a good silhouette. A good silhouette. It was a good concept. And she sold it. I was very confused. I agreed with her possibly being in the bottom, but not in the bottom too. Because mm -hmm. I feel like this is a complete look compared to others. 
Facts. So, oh, she didn't hem the bottom. Boo hoo. Is that what they were upset about? The hemline? I like. And they didn't, I know ca- they said they didn't care for the line. cut. They didn't care for the cut of the um the top. Um, right. The panty, which was an obvious, like, come on, you, sh- you should have made a panty or w- or something. Panty. And then they were talking about how it wasn't hemmed at the bottom. Oh. I- Up next, but we yeah, have Miss Naomi Carter. <laughs> we all see it, right? <laughs> Yeah, we all see this. I love Miss Naomi Carter. I do. And we're going to leave it there. <laughs> Up next is Dee Delicious. Stunning. Beautiful. Breathtaking. Amazing. Yes. And the wig stayed on. I was so proud of her. But then again, she wasn't dancing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did you think of Dee Dee's look here? I love it. it. It's giving like Cruella decided to join the modern era. <laughs> it would have been amazing if she would have had a Dalmatian. That would have been even mm-hmm. amazing. It really would have brought in the Cruella fantasy. Yes. Up next is Tamara Thomas. Girl, why was this in the top? I just knew she was finna lip sync when I saw her in this. Cause it's a corset with some bottoms. It's just I don't under this reminds me of when Georges won the design challenge in her season. Uh-huh. Now granted Tamara didn't win, but you know, she got praised. And they're like, Oh, we should hate it, but we love it so much. No, you're right, you should hate it. You were right. You should hate it. And she should be in the bottom, too. <laughs> don't, pl- don't play. Don't ick my yum. Don't do that. Don't ick my yum. Don't do That's that. That's the next episode. <laughs> I know. But I'm just letting them know. Don't ick my yum. Mm-hmm. That's going to be my thing for the rest of this season. So when something makes me mad, don't ick my yum. Don't do it. Don't ick my yum. Don't do it. Now, Are some- we doing this in the same episode? Yes. Oh, so we should probably hurry up then. Yeah, so up next is Michael Maruli. <laughs> oh, I love Michelle. God, she even got RuPaul saying it that way. Michael Maruli. Maruli. <laughs> Michael Maruli, honey. Um, Michael's look was great. I thought this was good. Yes. I thought it flowed well. I would have mm-hmm. chose a different wig, but... She did a good job. What color wig would you have liked? Oh, no, I would have done a black wig, but I think I would have done, like, a cute little pussycat. Because I feel like that hair, the big hair is distracting mm-hmm. from the actual garment. So, I, especially since it has a hood, I think I would have done mm-hmm. a cute little pussycat so you can really look at that hood as I'm coming down. Uh, I probably would have did, like, something straight. And long. Maybe even something That's straight would have done better, but with it being yeah. all curly and out there. In Texas, like. <laughs> in Texas, like. The one of the few times I don't want big hair. Up next is Vicky Vivacious, and this Barbie is competing on Drag Race. Oh, cute. Mm-hmm. I missed this one. I thought this was real cute. I thought it was fun. Very Barbie. Like this. Very Barbie. Very Especially, Barbie. you know, with the movie coming out and all. Yeah. Now it's on stream, I guess. Yeah, because I bought it. I haven't watched it yet, but I have bought it. On what streaming? I got it off of Voodoo. Because uh. I do Voodoo. I, I started doing Voodoo many years ago with Walmart. It's not associated with Walmart anymore, but I'm like. It, it makes sense just to keep it all there so I'm not having to go to two different places. I already mm-hmm. have to go to my uh, my Apple for a few things that I bought off of there many years ago. But majority of it is on Voodoo and I'm going to keep it on Voodoo. Mm. So. Yeah. I, uh, I went. <laughs> oh, no. 
But yeah, I need that. <laughs> now, unfortunately, they did not give us a full stage shot of all the queens. I wonder why. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we did get this one. And uh, yeah. one of my two favorite looks, Banksy, wasn't in this one. So I'm going to just say off the b- jump, Banksy was my favorite. Mm. Who was your favorite? Uh, I'm going to have to agree Banksy was pretty good. Mm-hmm. So now we can finally see all the queens on the stage. And it's our tops and bottoms of the week. Yay. So in the top, we had Tamara Thomas, Dee Delicious, and Banksy. And in the bottom, we had Caramel, Miss Naomi Carter, and Alexis St. Pete. Do we agree with the tops and bottoms of this episode? I don't know if Caramel should have been in the bottom. Unfortunately, I do since it was unfinished. Right. Now, for me, I would have took Tamara and put her in the bottom. Alexis would have mm-hmm. been Alexis would have been safe. I'm sorry. We've seen people win with outfits worse than that. So Alexis <laughs> would have been safe, and I would have had Tamara in the bottom, and I would have either brought Vicky or Michael up to the top. Mm-hmm. But hey, we're not RuPaul. So yeah, we find this is that not Christian Desmond's drag race. We find out that the winner is Banksy. Do you agree? Yeah. I agree as well. I wouldn't I would not have been shocked if RuPaul would have said both Banksy and DD won. Yes. I wouldn't have been shocked. Honestly, I was expecting it. And I was like, oh, just Banksy? Cool. Cool. Right. But yeah, Banksy did an amazing job. Love this. So we find out that the bottom two is Alexis St. Pete and Miss Naomi Carter. Mm-hmm. Do you agree with this top and bottom placement? Yeah. I'm sorry, just the bottom two placement. I realized what I said afterwards. I don't I don't mm-hmm. think Alexis should be here. I really think it should mm-hmm. be tomorrow. I really do. But they lip sync to Hot In It by Tiesto and Charlie XCX. Um, what did you think of this lip sync? Um, it was, it was okay. It was an okay lip sync. I really felt like, like the garment was really holding Alexis back because if you remember, yeah. she her shoe got caught in it, so she had to take it off, then put it back on, and it just seemed like yeah. she could never really turn up the way she wanted to because of her yeah. garment. So mm-hmm. I really felt like that, she, that material was real. Yeah. Yeah. Something. So it was just it just it didn't work for her. And then that split she tried to do. And like she did a good one in the last episode, but uh unfortunately this split was not splitting. It wasn't a split. It wasn't. It was a split decision on the split. <laughs> that part. But after the lip sync, RuPaul decided that the winner is Miss Naomi Carter. Do you agree? Yeah. I do as well. Which unfortunately means we must say goodbye to Alexis St. Pete. So she sashays away and we go into the next episode. So after her elimination, the queens come in. They're reading the message. And then they sit down and they congratulate Miss Banksy. Mm-hmm. Now, Miss Banksy is a, a shady lady this episode, honey, because she started stirring the pot. She was, yes. <laughs> she was like, oh, even Mama Rue brought up on the main stage about uh, Carmel and Tamara's fight, bringing the whole thing back up. Right. <laughs> And but, I mean, it wasn't that big of a fight. It was just a disagreement. It'd be different if they had come to blows. Yeah, yeah. So you know they were having their moment, and then Vicky, girl, don't do this. She gonna chime in like, "Well, I don't see that Tamara did anything wrong." Why does she feel like a pick me person? 
you know what? You just connected the last dot I needed for Vicky. I'm like, <laughs> something about her just seems off. And just thinking about the three episodes we've seen, she's a pick me. <laughs> she's a pick me. Wow. Oh, my thingy ain't even. Don't you just love how perceptive I am? My goodness. My goodness. But yes. And then they even call. I picked that up in half sleep. <laughs> and then I love how Tamara caught up, and She's like, now listen here. You try to start some mess. But it was, it was all that playful shade. Like, I enjoyed this type of shade. I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. So, typically, I don't show them getting out of drag. But I felt like this was important when you Miss Naomi Carter and Dee Delicious did a titty bang. Yes. We'll come back to that here in a minute. Mm-hmm. So, they enter the workroom the next day. And look, we can finally see everyone around the table. Huh. A wild concept. Um, they congr- <laughs> they congratulated Banksy for getting her first win. And Miss Naomi Kata brought up the fact during the little titty bang, they fell and she hurt her knee. And it's banged up pretty badly. And it just makes me feel like, oh my God, are we going to have another queen eliminated due to an injury? Mm-hmm. I think they need to sign like insurance waivers at this point. <laughs> my goodness. My goodness. Now, I don't think they should do that. But it's just like y'all queens got to be careful. I know y'all having a good time when y'all getting out of drag and stuff, but y'all got to be careful. Mm. So the match the yard done had hers and we had our room mail, which was really like one line. I think I think that's the shortest room mail we've ever gotten. Because it was just one line and then boom, here's RuPaul. So RuPaul announces that this week they will be doing the girl group challenge. And they have to pick their own teams. I was like, oh, okay. And I'm like, see, and I'm like, see, this could have been a really good time to have Didi also win. Because you can have been like, oh, Banksy and Didi, since y'all were the winners of last week's challenge, y'all the team captains. Mm Mm-hmm. You could have really played into that this episode. But hey, it is what it is. Now, these five, they flew to each other quickly. Quick. And I ain't even mad at them. Let let us be there. I am grabbing you so quick. And like <laughs> some other folks like, no, no. You, you stay over there. <laughs> over there. <laughs> no. My you don't team. have to help me write some lyrics, but yeah. <laughs> Oh, baby, I can come up with some fun lyrics, honey. I got you on them. Uh, I'm shorting. Because I know you're going to make fun of my height. (laughs) (laughs) So, team, one of the teams is Ginger, Kate Butch, Banksy, and Miss Naomi Carter. And the team that all flocked to each other was Michael Maruli, Vicky Vivacious, Tamara Thomas, Dee Dee Licious, and Caramel. So, they go record their lyrics with Michelle Visage and Ian Masterson. Mm -hmm. And then they do their choreography. Now, I feel like Naomi's knee had to get worse between choreography and performance. Because Mm -hmm. during the choreography, she was fine. Well, obviously she couldn't do much. But, you know, they were doing their little routine. But then when the performance came, all of a sudden there's a couch. Right. Which makes me think last minute they're like, hey... She can't dance. Yeah. So I I think what it couch. was was they thought, oh, it's a sprain. Yeah, it and might then, be worse than what it is. And then in order to prevent her from having to go home due to an injury, they were like, No, you're staying off your foot. Yeah, like you you sit down. Sit down. And I just love when they rehearse in heels. Mm-hmm. I love it. I'm like, because that'll be me. Like, I'm going to rehearse in the shoes I'm actually going to be dancing in. Right. Because I, I got to make sure I can do this in these shoes. Because if I get out here and realize these shoes don't have the support that I need to drop it low and pick it up slow. <laughs> like I'm Christina okay, Milian. Baby, I, we don't have a problem because I'm on the ground. Now, what are we going to do now? 
<laughs> I'll be like Michelle during that Destiny's Child's performance on 106 in Park when she fell. Oh, dang. That'll be me. And now we're looking like, what the fuck? But don't give up. Don't right. Worry. Don't and worry. I'm going to be Beyonce and I'm going to just walk over here. And don't worry, I'm going to get up and get right back information. I'm like, baby, that, no, that didn't happen. Hey, don't it my yum. If you want to. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's get into the actual performances but first we need to say hi to RuPaul what did we think of Ru's look this week um I swear we've seen this one before we saw it in pink that I was just going to say we've seen this look in pink yeah like we've seen this one same wig and everything same shoes and everything mm-hmm. it was just a pink dress Yes. Um, we are joined by Michelle Visage, Graham Norton, and special guest judge Sophie Ellis Baxter. I thought she was really fun. Her and um, what was old girl's name from last week? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, hold on. Uh, it was Yasmin. Yeah. Her and Yasmin were good guest judges. They can they come, were. They can come back anytime. So, anytime, darling. It's now time for Ik Mayam by the Fierce Fab Five or whatever they call themselves. Fab. Uh, Fierce Fab, Fab Five. Fourth. I think it was There's a force in there too. Hold on. Let me see. Did I write that? Did I get the name? Force Fab Five. Force Fab Five. So. What did we think of their performance all together? We're going to talk about them individually, but what did we think all together? I thought it was a really good performance. I, I do as well. I do as well. Um, we'll talk about it more when we get to the second group, but I thought they did good. There was a few of them that were behind on the choreography. Ahead by like a count and a half and mm-hmm. then behind by like two counts. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I was looking. But overall, this was a really good performance. Let's talk about Michael mm-hmm. Michael Maruli first. But okay. What? Nothing. I I agree with them on the the glitter because oh, I thought yes. it was a tattoo. Uh, yes, I'm like, baby, that chest is popping a little too much. I was like, are they trying to cover up a tattoo? But overall, I thought Michael did a good job. Yes. Up next is Vicky Vivacious. She Love that outfit. She was one of the ones behind on the choreography. She was behind. And I, Just a little bit. I, I thought her verse was cute. It was cute. Mm-hmm. Up next is Dee Delicious. She was the one ahead. <laughs> mm-hmm. And even the judges pointed out, like, you were so excited to do it that you were just a hair ahead of the rest of them. Exactly. I mean, but that says something about the choreography. That says something about Caramel as a choreographer. You get so excited, you could do it. Mm-hmm. So, I, I would feel excited too because we know Caramel is a performer. So, like, if she's our lead, yes, if I can do the choreography, I'm like, yeah, look what I can do. And Caramel taught hey, me, baby, exactly. you exactly don't need my, my uncoordinated self. Shoot, <laughs> I, I'm coordinated, but I wouldn't know how it would be in heels. Mm-mm. Now that's a whole nother coordination right there. Yes. Flat footed, I'm good. I, I, I've thought about trying to find some, some performance heels. <laughs> Flat footed, I'm have good. Them. But I don't know how I'm going to do with heels. So, speaking of the lead, we have Caramel here who ate. My yes. only thing was her skirt kept riding up, and I'm like, "Yeah, that was annoying." Like that was. I was like, "Are they gonna clock her for that?" I thought they were. I really did. I'm like, they're gonna say something about her skirt. I'm glad they didn't. But like, yes, I really thought they were. Because hers wasn't the only one that was riding up, though. That is true. But clearly, the best on the team. <laughs> Obviously. Clearly. She's but, like, I sing, I dance, I perform. What else do you want? But uh, we also got to give some props to Miss Tamara here because, baby, she ate as well. Oh, from the moment she was on the stage. Baby, like, once I found out how they were setting up, I'm like, oh, I already know who the top two is going to be. <laughs> I already know. <laughs> <laughs> Very clear. Very clear. But overall, mm-hmm. like, they did a really good job. And this split Tamara did... Oh. oh, oh, perfection! 
baby, touch the ground. Touch the ground. And the fact that Which three of them, thing. and the fact that three of them ended in a split, and two of them, I don't know what you call that move when they do that. Uh huh. I just, I loved every second of this. I'm like, yes, yes. yes. So now they we, gave a performance. They oh. did. So now we have the M52s with Don't Ick My Young. Um, I felt like this group, I like their lyrics more. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if they didn't have the burden of the couch, yes, I feel like they possibly could have won this week. Facts. Because they had the lyrics, but the performance... They did the, the performance is what brought them They down. did the best they could with what they had. Yes. Because it wasn't bad at all. It was just you could tell... Uh -huh. They had to work around this couch. Yes, because the the couch could should have just been an accessory instead of a the focal uh, point. Yeah, because she was working that couch. Oh, baby, you couldn't tell her that wasn't her moment right there on that couch. In that moment, she could stand up. Oh, she was like, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> She's like uh -huh. don't just don't know. I can do it. Okay. So uh, first right. we had like I'm not completely invalid. Hold yeah. on. Let me show you real quick. <laughs> so let's go over them individually. Kate Butch was first. I mm -hmm. loved her verse. I did not expect her to do a good rap verse. I'm like, okay, Kate. And when she made that running up that hill reference, I'm like, come on. Come on. Okay. And we like pause. Sure. So up next, we had Banksy. I love how shady her verse was. Yes. And I love how it was clearly geared towards tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I love her type of shade because it's fun shade. Because, you know, some people, there's there's a thin line between fun and just rude. Right. And she knows how to keep it in that fun area. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. So what did you think of Banksy's performance? Banksy was hilarious. Hilarious. Yes, it was a really good verse. Up next is Ginger Johnson. Now you know me. I get a, I get annoyed when they refer to a dip as a shablam. But mm -hmm. I gave her I gave her a pass because she rhymed shablam with mm -hmm. ham. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> you know what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. 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 All right. I'll let it slide. <laughs> this time. This time. Because dip and ham don't rhyme. So I'm like, shablam, ham. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. I will. I'll let it slide this time. Just this time, though. Shablam, ham. Yes, ma'am. And then last. But just this one time. <laughs> yeah. And then that last, but definitely not least. We had Naomi Carter. And baby, she said, I may be only be able to stand there in this one moment here, but I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. Yeah. Like I'm going to give you all that you need. Yeah, like I said, I really think if they didn't have the burden of this injury that Naomi had. And, you know, oh. I'm glad they're taking the precautions because we don't want her to get more hurt. But if she yeah. wasn't hurt, I think they would have won this week. I think it would have been them. I think it would have been. I, I stand on that. But that is their group. And this week's category is the Night of a Thousand Pop Icons. Yes. So, Lucretia, which pop icon would you have chosen? What pop icon? Hmm. I mean, we had a Beyonce. We had two, two Beyonces. Beyonces. So you're and telling me there would have been three Beyonces? Beyonces? There might have been three Beyonces. Okay, so which Beyonce look would you have tried to recreate? Well, with the tour not starting, my my options would have been limited. <laughs> but I probably would have did Crazy in Love Beyonce and did the Valentino outfit. Okay, okay. <laughs> I the, see. the color block. <laughs> I'm picking up what you're putting down. Um, I would have chosen 
Okay, never mind. I would have chosen Janet Jackson. I was shocked nobody did Janet. Ooh. I would have done Janet. And I think the look I would have done. <laughs> um, what's that song? Uh, anytime you can. Any place oh, I know what you like. I don't care who's around. I don't want to stop no, 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 just no, because. Just because. <laughs> the people walking by. Watching us. I don't give a damn. It's like you can't be written. <laughs> Baby, that song. You know, I used to play that song a lot as a kid. As an adult. You didn't know what the heck it was about. As an adult, an adult. I'll never forget when it was all connecting for me. I remember I was in college and I had it on my little iPod Nano. And um, I was sitting there and I was well, listening. Which one? Like the, was it the itty bitty one or was it the, the itty the bitty one, the one that just had the circle on it? Mm-hmm. I had both of the Nanos. Now, I, I had, had the one with the screen and the one with yeah, just the circle. I had the big iPod with the you know the screen and the, all that stuff but it broke so i got me the little nano because i was a broke college kid so i got the nano and i'll never forget i am in the dairy cooler stocking the milk and the song comes i'm like oh that's my song and i'm just sitting there listening and i'm like i'm putting the milk on the shelf i'm like janet janet and i'm just singing along and i'm sitting there and i'm like <laughs> I don't want to stop just because people come in my watching us. I'm like, I had to stop. I don't for, give up what they think. I, I had to sit down on my chair that I made of milk crates. I'm sitting there and I'm like, my God. Were you contemplating life that day? I was. I'm like, and it just it does that to me and like so, like there's a whole playlist that I found uh, somebody on TikTok made talking about songs we didn't realize were dirty until we were adults and I'm like y'all are nasty like that one just y'all just, are a completely different generation I knew what that song was about you, but yeah, remember you're older than me though <laughs> but even when it came out I wasn't I was probably the same age you were figuring it out <laughs> when it came out. But yes, because I remember the song. Um, I was in third grade when that song came out. Oh, <laughs> shit. I think I was. If you were in third grade, I had to be been probably. You weren't day. born yet. When did the song come out? Because if it came out after like 92, 93. then I was one. <laughs> But I'll never, I will never forget when I realized uh, Jessica Simpson's I Want to Love You Forever. Huh? Baby. You didn't know that was about doing the dirty things for the first time. When she said, pour your love all over me and I'll cherish every drop here on my knees. I'm like... Almost fell off my couch. I'm pretty sure she didn't realize that that was what they were talking about either. Because she had ghost writers. Even as a ghost writer, if I would have got that song, and I would have been like, and I'll cherish every drop here on my knees. Period. <laughs> I wanna love you forever. Baby, but yeah, I would have done Janet. I would have done a look from the Anytime music video. Um, oh, if I was going to do Janet, ooh, it would have No, no, no. Been, I take that back. Uh, I take it back. I would do the Call On Me music video with Nelly. That flower look that she had. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, that, I think that would have been the look I recreated. I'm sorry. I would have done If. Ooh, okay. Okay. My yeah, first thought, my first thought it, it was, was my first thought was doesn't really matter, but that little orange zip up jacket and the sweats, I would get red for that. <laughs> I would get red for that. Many, 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 my love for you. I can't believe my dream come true. I, I ain't gonna say it, but I may or may not still know the choreography to that. <laughs> <laughs> so I could get to the end of the stage and hit him real quick with a t- t- oh baby don't don't play with me right 
It's just I just need a moving uh stage with me. <laughs> but yes. I, I'm uh, Chris Brown. <laughs> so let's Let me get... take you down. No, Lord, not Chris Brown and taking you down. Lord, that had men humping the ground for years. Still TikTok. Oh well I I, I don't anything You forget Chris... I am on first trip TikTok. Listen, anything Chris Brown, I skip over now. I just I can't. I can't with him anymore. But there was a time where I used to I don't to, know I used what to rock do now. Him and him and Jada Pinkett Smith are getting on my nerves. Whoa, not too much on Mama Jada. Not too much. Not too much. Anyway. Look, keep and, your business at home. Anyway. Up first, serving Freddie Mercury, we have Vicky Vivacious. I thought this look was cute. It was cute. She borrowed, you know, Lady Camden's suit. <laughs> Not Lady Camden's. Up next, serving I like Nicki Minaj. Lady Camden's Fred, Freddie Mercury better. <laughs> Up next, serving Nicki Minaj, we have Dee Delicious. I thought this was stunning. Of course, you're a Nicki fan. I even, said this was gonna live. I'm gonna say, hate. even if I wasn't a Nicki fan, I could appreciate this because honestly, I could. I believe Dee even said this, like she could see Nicki wearing this. I can see Nicki wearing this. I can see Nicki wearing it. Like this, and be- she was talking about old Nicki, and I'm like, heck, today's Nicki. Would yeah. still try to wear it. And honestly, I think that's why I'm so elaborate. And so, like, I say just random things because that's the Nikki that drew me in. Mm-hmm. Was the fun wigs, the different personalities, the fun lyrics. Like, nobody was having fun lyrics before Nikki came through. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I enjoyed this look. Up next, serving Beyonce, we have Caramel. Stunning. Breathtaking. Oh. Yes. <laughs> but my life, my life, my life, my life. Get it up. Let me see it. Get it up. Don't make me watch Homecoming again. Huh? Don't make me watch it again. Matter of fact, I, I think never- I'll just turn on the album. That that I think that might do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to watch Homecoming because that's my favorite part. <laughs> I can't wait for this movie to come out. Oh, I want to go to it. So I want to go to the freaking Taylor Swift one that's out now, but nobody wants to go. Oh. For real. But I want to go to the Renaissance one for sure. Even if I got to walk to fucking Court Skin, I'm going to go watch it. But mm. anyway. Maybe I'll kidnap you one weekend. <laughs> So up next, we can go up here and go to dinner theater. Hey, up next is Elvis Presley serving Elvis Presley. We have Tamara Thomas. I do agree with Michelle's uh, critique. I wish she would have gave a drag version of Elvis instead of just giving us Elvis. Mm-hmm. Because when she walked out, I'm like, oh, I have a suspicious mind right now. Um, that's my favorite. Oh no, I can't help but fall in love is my favorite Elvis song, followed by Suspicious Minds. But I'm not the biggest fan of Elvis either, you know. Yes, appropriation. I know it was his team. That's why I'm not too hard on him because I know it was the team pushing him to do it. Yes, at least according to the last movie. But it's just, yeah, it still kind of rubs me the wrong way. But yeah, what did you think of tomorrow's Elvis look here? Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of it, if only because of the jacket. I understand. I understand. All right, so up next we have My- Michael Maruli giving Michael you Maruli. all five Spice Girls. All five. I love this. This was so fun. It was so fun, so creative. You better come on, Frank and Spice. I just, and spice. I just loved it so much. It all just it worked so well together. Ooh. It was just so good. Um, up next is Banksy serving David Bowie. I love this look. I love the pants. I love the hair. It was like you didn't have to tell me this was David Bowie. 
Yeah. I would have been like, oh yeah, David Bowie. Mm-hmm. 1980 David Bowie. Yes. What did you think of this look? Uh, I almost had a seizure. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad you didn't. Uh, I had an asthma attack at ACL. Oh, no. Uh. <laughs> like, I had to get carted off and everything. Oh, no. <laughs> You That's gotta, it. So next year, I need to bring my inhaler. Yeah, you got to be careful. Hell, you should bring it at DragCon. I learn every year. Yeah, but you should bring it to DragCon too, just in case. Yeah, I probably. Well, I had mine at DragCon. Oh, you did. Okay. And then when we got when we when we got back from California, like three weeks later, I got an email from CVS. And they were like, yeah, if your inhaler has this batch number on it, it's defective, and you need to stop using it. Oh, and I God. was like, well, fuck. Did yours have that batch number? Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah. Stop using that immediately. All right. Also serving Beyonce, we have Miss Naomi Carter. Hold up. Yeah. They don't love you, and I gotta love you. Slow down. Slow down. I love that it was drag, Beyonce. <laughs> I thought this was really cute. Now, if I would have done this, you know, at the beginning of the Hold Up music video, she walks out of that room and the water comes out with her. Mm -hmm. I would have just made the whole thing wet. Yeah. I think that's what I would have done just to make it a little different, but it's still an amazing look. Like the face, mm -hmm. the gown, the bat. I'm here for it all. I'm here for it all. Yes. What did you think of Miss Naomi Carter? I liked it. I thought it was good. Especially under the circumstances and she still decided I'm going to wear a heel. Yep. Now she wore a sensible one. And there was a lot of support on it. Mm -hmm. So up next serving Elton John. Sir Elton John actually. We Sir have Elton Ginger John. Johnson. Come on, Rocket Man. Hmm. I thought this was really cute. She said on the Muppets, which I I, I totally like love because I the Funk Land the still has me in a chokehold three months later. What has you in a chokehold? Defunct Land. What is Defunct Land? Defunct Land is a a channel on YouTube mm -hmm. and he eats, he delves into like the history of different um different things like discontinued rides at Disneyland, um, the parks, um, my favorite two that I watch over and over and over again is uh, the uh, who wrote the Disney Channel uh, three four note mnemonic. Wait. The dun, 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 dun. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, there's that one. I think that was the one that like got me into it. And then the one that I absolutely love and gives me the most serotonin is is um the history of the line because the opening line for the 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 whole episode is. How much do you know about lines? And every time I hear it, it gives me so much serotonin. I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, I started watching Defunct Land on accident, like, in the middle of July. It is October, and I still watch it every night, like, it, without fail. <laughs> Go ahead. That sounds like some interesting uh, uh, videos I would like to watch. Because I remember watching a video where it broke down The Wizard of Oz amusement park mm -hmm. and like just Ooh, he does um there's like three amusement parks in australia that he does mm -hmm. um there's the one with the wiggles and how that all fell apart there was the party that walt disney threw after snow white got released hmm. and how that kind of broke up the whole family genre in the studio yeah now i haven't watched Love the wiggles since i was a kid 
I know but nothing of the Wiggles. I've been seeing I didn't quite know a, who they were. I got. Uh, I've seen quite a few videos of the Purple Wiggle. The new boy. What's in without his shirt on? So we're just gonna continue on to Kate Butch serving Shania Twain. I was shocked she did Shania Twain. I really thought she was just gonna do Kate Bush. She was like, no, no, I'm finna show y'all that I'm gonna do Shania Twain. And we're finna go over the things that don't impress her much. Rocket science. Uh huh. Cars. Uh huh. Not even Brad Pitt. <laughs> okay, so you're Brad Pitt. That don't, don't impress, impress me much. much. Oh, oh. And oh. I love the special guest judge. She was playing right into everyone. She was like, "Oh, I wonder if Brad Pitt." And she was like, Bloop. And "I was like, oh, <laughs> I love it. I love it." But yes, that made her an awesome special guest. Now, yeah, because you know Shania was on season. Was it ten? Yeah, because I remember we so. had the mayhem and Monet exchange lip sync to uh, "Man, I Feel Like a Woman." Brum, brum, oh, brum, so brum, wasn't that a? Brum, brum. a um, I thought that was a. Oh, okay, yeah, you're right. Yeah, she was there I for it. That was a, now that look was at a, look at um, look at this screenshot. All, all of the queens in one screenshot on the main stage. Look at that. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? So, out of all of these looks, who had your favorite? My favorite. Uh, as much as I want to be like, ooh, Beyonce and Caramel, I'm gonna have to say the spice, lo- the Franken spice. My spice was a good. Michael Maruli did a really good job. I'm gonna have to. I, I'm gonna agree. I'm gonna agree. I was torn between her and Caramel. I was. See, we, look, we even had the same second. Well, then I'm gonna choose Caramel so that both of them can get chosen. Caramel yes, and Michael Maruli. So we find out that the team M52 is safe. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then we find out that. This team was the top team of the week, and we're doing another top two this episode. Yeah, and I'm like, okay. And the part that got me was when she said all this, and only one person is going to get a badge. Only one on the girl group challenge. When you gave out six last year in the girl group challenge. Hmm. Because oh lord, oh lord. But anyway, so. From my understanding, the reason why they did this is because of that extra queen that left. Mm-hmm. I'm because my thing is it's a little too soon to do another non-illumination. Right. But knowing that that person is gone, you're right. It made sense. Mm-hmm. And like I said, honestly, if they didn't have the couch kind of slowing them down, I really thought the other group could have won. Because they had better verses to me. Mm-hmm. But they had, but uh, the Fab Force Five here had the better po- uh, performance. Right. So they were the in sync to the, the other Street group Boys. being the Bad Street Boys. Yes. So in this case, I think I would have chosen this group as well just because they had the better performance. And I, I acknowledge that because as an in sync fan, it didn't phase me who could sing and who couldn't sing. Oh, there was but one who can really sing. Instinct, huh? There's one that can really sing. And then the others can hold a tune. The others give a great performance. But because, can't dance and sing Because at the same I've seen time. a lot of their clips on uh, TikTok. And my boy can dance and sing. If y'all don't know, I'm talking about Jay-Z Chavez. Yes, Shaz um, Shaze. Shaze. He should have had the career that Justin had. I'm just gonna say it. Yeah. It, it should have been him. But you can thank the the man that's dead now for that. But did you watch that documentary? No. Oh, I did. But. Yeah, Jay-Z. He went to jail and then died in there. Oh, I 
would hate to go to jail and die in jail. I would hate yeah, that. Especially if I'm not doing life. Now, if I'm doing life, then okay. I'm going to die in jail. <laughs> but. No, life is technically only 25 years. Which, that's a whole nother conversation. Now, out of all these queens here, who do you think should have been the top two? Mm. <clears throat> now, for the performance, I would have been like Caramel and Tomato. <laughs> What's her name? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> In <laughs> tomato. Uh. <laughs> I heard somebody call her that voice, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's funny. Uh. It would have been caramel and Tamara. But if you're going off of outfits, it would have been caramel and Michael Maruli. So, combining both the performance and the runway, who would you say should have been the top two? Uh, Caramel and I still say Michael Maruli because she had a pretty decent verse. I would say Caramel and Tomorrow, including both the runway and um the actual performance. Mm-hmm. Because Tomorrow ate that performance. Her verse was good. Michael yes. just did okay. Yeah. So I would have chose the top two that actually was Tamara and Caramel. And I love how even Cara said, I knew eventually I was going to lip sync against her because, come on, the producers, they're not going to pass that opportunity up. Oh, the housemates? Oh, we're going to make since we thought last episode. Yeah. Oh, imagine if Old Girl didn't have to go home. Oh. I could see them trying to, because, you know, those things we brought up. I can see them bringing them up to justify making them the bottom too. Mm-hmm. So either way it goes, we was going to get this lip sync this episode. <laughs> oh, producers, y'all, y'all, y'all ain't slick. Y'all ain't slick. But they lip sync to Remember by Becky Hill and David Guetta. First of all, I love this song. Like when it started playing, I'm like, oh, I didn't realize how popular this song was in the UK because I looked it up. And I'm like, oh, it was popular in the UK. Mm-hmm. I heard it on TikTok once, and I've been obsessed with it since. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, when this started playing, I'm like, okay, okay. So, what did we think of this lip sync altogether? Um, well, we all know Caramel turned it out. Although, I was a little worried because of the whole hat situation, because that was what lost her the lip sync. Uh, the first time was her hair was too big and I said you would sit here and wear something on your head that's going to fuck it up for you (laughs) now I'll say this this is probably one of the best lip syncs Drag Race UK has ever seen Mm -hmm. like both Caramel and Tamar really just gave everything I do they agree. They said we don't leave it on the stage. I do agree that Caramel was like the winner, but like if RuPaul would have said they were both winners, I wouldn't have been mad at. I wouldn't have been mad at all. At all. At all. But yeah, this was such an amazing lip sync. RuPaul announces that Caramel finally gets her badge. Yes. Because she deserved it last episode. Mm-hmm. And tomorrow is safe to slay another day. I say tomato, you say tomorrow. (laughs) Oh, I said tomorrow. I'm going to say tomorrow. My bad. (laughs) But they sing to to, to the moon. And we go on. So next week, they're going to be doing a disaster cast. I'm not sure if this is going to be like an acting challenge or maybe an improv. I'm thinking more along the lines of improv. Just the way that RuPaul was explaining it. Mm -hmm. But we will see next week but baby we did it we got those two episodes covered Mm -hmm. so we're gonna go ahead and wrap things up Cresha where can they find you on social media you can find me at Cresha McGill that's C-R-E-S-H-A-M-C-G-I-L-L on all social media and you can find me on all social media platforms at Simply Desmond that's S-I-M-P-L-Y-D-E-S-M-O-N-D thank you so much for sending peace your day with us don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we'll see y'all tomorrow bye